Prince of Asgard, you have what is ours, the casket of ancient winters. Stand aside. No. None of you will leave Asgard alive. Every year, the weather warms up and the skies turn sunny. Unless you live in some crazy place that doesn't have seasons. And when that happens, there are a few things you can always depend on. Baseball, cookouts, and summer blockbusters. Movies to satiate the public's hunger for generic and mind-numbing entertainment. One of the first to strike this year is Thor, and just as expectedly, the movie's been adapted to just about every gaming console on the market. We've already reviewed the Wii and Nintendo DS versions, and we're back for the third version. Turns out the third time isn't a charm. This is Thor God of Thunder for the PlayStation 3. So obviously, this is the HD version of Thor. This is the same version you get on the Xbox 360 as well. And for those who prefer their movie games to be in high definition, well, the good news is Thor looks better than his Wii counterpart. The bad news is, that's really the only good thing I can say about this one. In fact, this is easily the worst Thor of the three. Unlike the Wii version, Thor is a brawler on the PS3. It's a beat-em-up very much in the vein of another skull-bashing god, that being Kratos. The parallels between God of War and God of Thunder should be pretty clear. This is a paint-by-numbers brawler. And although that's not necessarily a bad thing, Thor just doesn't pull it off as well as his ghost-faced Spartan counterpart. <laughs> So among the Thor games, the Nintendo DS version is easily the best. In fact, not only is that the only one that's legitimately good, it's actually one of the best movie games I've played in years. But if you're still interested in this version, the premise is simple. Thor acts as a kind of prequel to the movie, with you as the hammer-wielding son of Odin. I will destroy you! The gameplay is pretty much what you'd expect from a game like this. You mash buttons to attack your enemies with moves that look a lot flashier than they really are. But again, like the Wii version, there's a bit of complexity to the controls as well. There are lots of button combinations for some pretty elaborate moves, and Thor also has the ability to cast attack spells, using lightning, wind, and thunder to his immortal advantage. This adds some variety to what would otherwise be lots of button mashing, but even that doesn't salvage Thor. Interesting attacks only go so far when the controls used to pull them off are so poor. Even the grapple mechanic, uh, which allows you to grab your enemies and dispose of them with your bare hands, is kind of held back by a confusing implementation of quick time events that are just more trouble than they're worth. So there are both design and execution issues with Thor's gameplay. The Odin Sun never seems to do what the buttons you're pushing are supposed to. So there's this, this disconnect between you and your character. There's also a disconnect between you and the game. And that's thanks to lots of problems with graphical glitches and hit detection. There's just this overall lack of polish in Thor that kind of makes playing the game more of a chore than a fun, godlike experience. In fact, you'll need the patience of a god to get through this one. If you like the movie enough to buy one of the games, go with the DS version. It's an awesome game. This one, though, I mean, the bad controls, unpolished graphics, and boring levels just aren't worth buying popcorn for. Unless you're gonna throw it at the screen in Thor, God of Thunder. <laughs> 